Definition. A business owner is the legal proprietor of a business, an individual or group that owns the assets of a firm and profits from them. What is up y'all? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Jessica Stansberry and this channel is a little bit of sass, a little bit of Southern, a little bit of advice, a little bit of strategy. And you know, we just, we like to keep it fun around here. And this video is absolutely different than the normal videos I do. So normally I'm like, oh, five tips to do X, Y, or Z. But today I'm gonna spill some tea. And I don't have tea in this mug, nor do I have coffee. You're welcome, it's water. But that's because I don't drink coffee because to me, now you do you, honey. But to me, it tastes like hot, burnt tires soaked in water. And I actually do like tea, but it's just not what was on the menu right now. So, but I wanted a mug. I wanted a mug. If I was gonna spill some tea, I needed a mug. This one's from Disney World. That's how we roll around here. So like I said, I am normally one to give you these one, two, three, four, five tips. And I'm not gonna say this video is not gonna be helpful. Cause if you're someone who's an MLM rep or a network marketing rep or whatever you wanna call yourself, then I think that you will get some really solid things out of this video. However, disclaimer, it may make you mad. I think I done just got mad. It may make you a little mad to hear what I have to say. It's fine. I don't, I don't care. You know, it's funny. I am a fairly like neutral person on the internet. Like I don't, not that I don't give my opinions cause I absolutely do. Y'all know if you follow me on Instagram or anywhere like that, that I am, you know, here for the things that I don't care if anybody else cares that I care about. But I hardly ever do like actual controversial content. This might be my first piece and I am kind of loving it. I'm an Enneagram 8. If you don't know about Enneagram 8s, they tend to not shy away from conflict. And I won't say I welcome conflict. That's not it. I just don't, like I'm not gonna not tell you something for fear of it hurting your feelings when you need to be told it. I mean, so before we really talk about whether or not MLMs can consider themselves small business owners, I have to bring it back a little bit and tell you a little bit of a personal story. I have been a part of an MLM before. I have actually ordered things from multiple MLMs and have products that I still love and still use to this day from MLMs. I am not inherently anti-MLM. And I think that's important because I know that there's like this whole movement on YouTube about like, being anti MLM. Now, that being said, I did a lot of research for this video. I did a lot of like, you know, getting behind the scenes of what people who are MLM reps think about, you know, why they got in the business, about all of these different things. And that led me down kind of an anti MLM rabbit hole. And people sent me different videos and different podcast episodes. And I might change my position on that. But for now, we're gonna say, I am not anti-MLM. I am literally drinking a fizz stick from Arbonne in my cup, in my water, because I like the way they taste. Um, I have used Pampered Chef. I have used tons of different MLM products that I love. Now, I was actually part of an MLM back in 2010. So if you know anything about my business story, you know that I quit corporate and came home to start my business. But something I don't talk about a lot is that when I was like in that last two weeks in my job, when I made the decision, like I'm going home, right? Like I'm done here. And yes, I have a Band-Aid on my hand. My husband tried to kill me yesterday. He really didn't, don't send anybody after him. I fell on a nail. I didn't fall on a nail. The nail technically fell on me while I was trying to help my husband with something in the barn, but it is what it is. So just ignore the big Band-Aid as I talk with my hands like I always do. Okay, so what happened was, oh, I'm gonna quit my job. I got treated like crap. I'm gonna quit my job and I'm gonna go home and stay with my baby. And I'm gonna do graphic design work on the side. That was kind of the plan, okay? Well, in the two weeks that I was getting ready to quit, we were like downgrading our package with our TV service or we you know, switched auto insurance companies or what we were doing anything we could to save money and I was doing anything I could to make money. So I knew that you could make money with MLMs and for whatever reason of all the freaking MLMs y'all that I could have gotten into, I 
signed up. I remember it was $99. I didn't have $99, but I signed up with $99 anyway to sell 31 bags. Now, I, I'll be honest, I don't know why. It's not like I have a, you know, a passion for 31 bags. It's not like I was using a ton of 31 bags and then I thought, oh my gosh, my family and friends would love to buy these. I just saw the money opportunity and I was literally getting to quit my job and not make any money. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna sell 31. I had two parties, one for my mother-in-law and one for my mom. And I made like $700. I thought I was rich, by the way. I really did. I was like, oh my gosh, $700, which guys, $700 made a huge difference when I wasn't making any money, like a huge difference. And I think this is part of the reason why I'm not anti MLM. They can really be useful for some people in a certain season in their life. Um, but anyway, I made $700 and I only had those two parties because I literally realized that my mom had a party and my mother-in-law had a party. And for each of these parties, I invited family and friends from each side of the family to these parties. And y'all know I live in a small town and my logical brain went like got activated and was like, okay, so now all I'm going to do is force my family and friends to come to parties to buy things from me because they feel sorry for me. And I was like, I'm not doing that. So I stopped. Now, did I like the bags? Sure. Have I bought into other MLMs since because I like the products? Absolutely. And I'm telling you this story because I honestly don't want you to think that I am coming from an anti MLM standpoint when we kind of dive into this, right? Like I don't want you to think that. And you know what? I may lose some friends when I say what I'm about to say. And I may have some people in my audience mad at me, but I want you to give me a fair chance at my opinion here and to give me, to listen to what I have to say. Because again, I think MLMs have a place. I think if you love a product that is developed by an MLM, it has a place. However, I think most people do it wrong and I think most people think of an MLM and being a rep at, for an MLM company kind of incorrectly. If you are a rep for an MLM company, if you are an MLM rep, if you are a network marketing representative, you are not a small business owner. Let me read you the definition of what a business owner is. A business owner is the legal proprietor of a business, an individual or group that owns the assets of a firm and profits from them. I talk a lot about affiliate marketing and, you know, kind of making passive income here on this channel. And one of the ways that you can make passive income is with affiliate marketing. And MLMs are basically just a big affiliate marketing kind of system except that you're rewarded for people who then come under you and sell as well. So it's kind of a stacked affiliate system, but you are not a business owner. I'm sorry, it's, you're just not. You, you, you don't create the products, you don't set your own prices, you aren't in charge of basically anything except for how much you work and how much you put into the company. So this is the part that I wanna be a little controversial about because I see so many people like, my business does this or my company does this. I've gotten pitches from people in my Facebook Messenger like, my company has these amazing, insert whatever here. My company does this. You know, my business, I do this. Guys, you're not a business owner. I'm sorry, but it's not true. Now, does that mean that an MLM can't be part of your business? Nope, absolutely not. And that's actually what I wanna talk about. But I actually asked on Facebook, I went and asked, my friends and my family and my followers on Instagram who are currently in MLMs, who are have not been in MLMs before, who, who have been in them and left. And I definitely had some people who are currently in MLM businesses who when I said, do you consider yourself a business owner? They said yes. And so I think that this mindset or this lifestyle is touted in a way when you sign up for an MLM that you are now, you now own your own business. Now you own your own business. And in, in a facet of a small, tiny way, you kind of do because you do have to pay taxes on the income you make from this company. You're technically a 1099 contractor and you do have to pay taxes. However, that's about as far as that goes. 
Otherwise, you don't, you don't have any ownership in the company. They will drop you like a fly as soon as you're not making the money you need to make. They will drop you like a fly as soon as you break one of their rules. They do not involve you in the product creation. They do not involve you in the pricing structure. You don't set the prices. You're not a part owner. If the company goes down, it is not your decision. So the whole MLMs are business owners things, I just have to like, no. No, they're not. So I actually talked to a lot of people when I was kind of doing research to this. And honestly, half of what I learned or half of what I was told, I feel like needs its own video. So if you're interested in more videos like this one about MLMs, about you know different things, about crazy things or good things that happen in MLMs, definitely leave a comment below. But one of the things was, you know, I kept asking people when they would say, yeah, I'm in an MLM, or I used to be in one and I was fairly successful, I would ask them, okay, so did you consider yourself a business owner? And I will say that 90% of people that I asked that question back to who have exited their MLM said, yes, absolutely. At the time I considered myself a business owner, but that's because that's what they told me to think. And I was naive. That was literally the like standard answer. I know for a fact that multiple of these people have now went on to start their own businesses as actual small business owners and they have a different perspective. And when you look at it from the perspective of, you know, I do everything in my business. I make every decision for my business. I own the whole dang thing. And by the definition of being a small business, I'm a small business owner. I almost think sometimes that like MLM reps when they talk about start your business or whatever it discredits the whole you know the work it takes to be a small business owner it like discredits the fact that like you can just pay 99 dollars and buy into an existing company and be a business owner i actually pulled up the um ftc page on mlms and i found it really interesting because the FTC is obviously not pro um, MLM. <laughs> they are definitely anti MLM because they say things like, most people who join legitimate MLMs make little or no money. Some of them lose money. People who have become involved in an illegal pyramid scheme may not realize they've joined a fraudulent venture. They also can't keep up with required fees or the inventory purchases they need to make to make to qualify for rewards and they can't earn enough money to cover their expenses. Now, as I was doing my research, I'll be honest here, be totally honest, I that was probably the biggest theme was I lost more money than I made when I was in an MLM. And then there would be the rebuttal like, no, but well then you didn't do it right. But <laughs> here's kind of here's kind of what I discovered. I have a couple of friends and a couple of contacts who were slash are in like the top tier of their organization. Now, if you've not listened to The Dream, the podcast, it's actually really enlightening and eye-opening about MLMs. So I'll leave a link below, but it's also a very skewed, you know, very anti-MLM podcast. So I want to like preface that there. However, in it, she talks to someone who is in the very, very tippy top of the 31 company. And she is like in the top 2% or top 1%. And she says that after expenses, she makes about $42,000 a year. Guys, $42,000 is nothing to scoff at. And especially if you're someone who's home with their kids and whatever, I get it. But I guarantee, I guarantee the hours required to get there were insane. And the company could literally pull the rug out from underneath her at any given moment. I did talk to a couple of people who at their time in the top one to 2% of their particular company, two of them in very different MLM companies, they were making something like two to $400,000 a year, some of them a million a year. Um, but when I asked, you know, do you think this is, is the, the norm? And do you think that this is achievable for most people? They both were like, no, absolutely not. There were like 10 other people making this much money in the company. It's because I got in early. It's because I had influence and I had to work so hard to get that and keep it. And as soon as I quit or as soon as I slowed down, it was gone. So to basically like be completely frank, 
and answer the, my own question here, if you're an MLM rep, you are not a business owner. That is just the pure hard fact. Nobody considers you a business owner. You're, the federal government doesn't consider you a business owner. You are not in the definition of a business owner. You are not making business owner decisions in your company and you are not in control of what happens. Now, I said in the beginning of this video that I am not anti-MLM and that I think they do have a place and I really, really, really do. So think back to a minute ago when I said that MLMs were basically like a stacked affiliate system. So with affiliate marketing, which I've talked about a thousand times on here, with affiliate marketing, you essentially make a commission for sending someone to purchase something. And that's exactly what an MLM is. You make a commission for every sale you make. The part that makes it pyramidy and why it is always referred to or kind of um, referenced with a pyramid scheme is that you know you make a certain percentage off the sales you make right? Like you make 20% or whatever it is off the sales you make. Okay. Then, you know, you sign somebody up underneath you and you make a certain percentage of the sales they make and then so on and so forth. So eventually you move up and you've got a bunch of people down here below you doing affiliate marketing for the same product and you make a little cut of their sales as well. Now, the difference here is with affiliate marketing, sometimes there's definitely like required commission for a payout. So you have to at least have $100 sitting there before we'll pay you or whatever. But for the most part, there's not really a lot of restrictions on how much traffic you have to send or whatever to be an affiliate for a company. Now with MLMs, there are requirements around like how much traffic you have to send, how many sales you have to make and whatever. And that is where, that's where kind of a skepticism comes in because it sounds to me after my research that a lot of people will be ready to hit big numbers or will be ready to kind of move up the ladder or will be in qualification for something and they won't be able to, for whatever reason, hit their numbers that month. And so they, they spend it themselves. And that's just skeezy, number one. But number two, so if you are currently part of an MLM business or you want to join one, if you have a product that you love and you wanna share. So when I was doing my research for this, I put out a public post on my personal Facebook page and on Instagram, just kind of a call for people who have been in MLMs and for people who you know want to be in one, like what is your reasoning, blah, blah, blah. I didn't have a lot of local friends reply though. And here's something you need to know. And I live in a very, very small town and the MLM rate has to be higher here than everywhere else. <laughs> like I just see it so, so, so much. And the funny part about this, so funny, is I literally posted on my personal Facebook page and was like, hey, if you've ever been in an MLM or whatever, can you comment and let me know your experience, okay? While I was combing through comments and like re responding back to people, I get a friend request from someone. And this person has like 52 mutual friends, all of them local. And in that instance, I generally accept those friend requests because I probably do know that person even if their name is not ringing a bell because we live in a small town. And also I have a lot of filters set up on my personal Facebook profile where, you know, if I want to share a picture of my kids, I'm only sharing it to these, these certain groups of people who I think need to see a picture of my kids. Or if I'm sharing something, I only want to go to local. I have that set up. Um, well, anyway, so this girl sends me a friend request. We have 52 mutual friends. I'm literally talking about MLMs while she sends this friend request and while I accept it. And within 30 seconds, she had, I have accepted her friend request and she has tried to add me to her darn $5 jewelry Facebook group. The marketing strategies behind MLMs is like a whole nother level of, we need a whole nother video for that. So if you want a video on that, let me know in the comments below, I'll happily do one. Um, because they're slimy and they're skeezy and for the most part, they're not any good. But I found this really funny that like literally while I was asking for comments for people who have been in MLMs and trying to compile information for this video and future videos, I have this girl literally do exactly what MLM people are made fun of for doing. And it's like, seriously, come on now. But back to what I was saying, when I made that post, 
I did it as a public post on my personal Facebook profile. So the way the Facebook algorithm works is the first few people who see it and comment on it, it's gonna show it to more people like that. So I didn't get a ton of like local interaction on that post. So this morning I posted local friends. If you are currently part of an MLM or have been in the past, what made you make the decision to join? And every single comment I have so far, which is only one, two, three, four, five, has been, well, I love the products and I thought, why not make a little extra money? And guys, I agree. Y'all, I do that all the time. Like, oh, you want my phone case? Let me send you my loopy code. If you want these Pantone postcards that are falling out of the box, I'll send you an Amazon link. Want my art? I'll send you a link to that. I literally do that all the time. That's affiliate marketing. Here's where I think people go wrong. And this is really my message here in this video. And really what I want to say to you, if you are in an MLM or considering one, is to treat it like an affiliate. Now, that being said, you can't make money with affiliates without having a brand or a personal, you know, um, influencer kind of status that people will wanna buy the things you have, right? Like because I have almost 100,000 people here on YouTube, because I have 13,000 people on Instagram, if I show something like Pantone postcards, somebody's gonna want a link and I'm gonna make like a quarter, right? For if they purchase them. So if I had no audience, I couldn't do that. So the misstep I think that happens here is people jump into MLMs and think, I'm a business owner now and my job is to get other people to want to sell what I'm selling. When really, you should try and build a personal brand. You should try and build an influencer status in whatever industry you wanna be in, right? Like, be a fashion influencer, and then you can share LuLaRoe if you love their ugly leggings. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but they're ugly. A few years ago, we went to Disney World, and you know how you play like Punch Buggy? I don't know, did you guys ever play that? Like where um, you see a Volkswagen bug and you like punch the person and you're like, punch buggy. And, and that's like a game you play, right? Where whoever sees the most like Volkswagen Beetles is gonna have the, less bru the least bruises, I guess. Well, my sister and I did that with, <laughs> with Disney LuLaRoe. <laughs> and so we were at Disney and anytime we saw anybody with like Disney specific LuLaRoe, we punched each other and it was so much fun because it's so obnoxious and loud, you can't help but see it. But the, the thing is, if you're a fashion blogger and you love your you know, Mickey Mouse leggings, then share the crap out of them. But don't, don't treat it as your business because it's not. It's not, you're an affiliate for this company. And the only person making good money is the person at the top or the people at the top. So if you are, so as an affiliate for something, the mindset shifts to like, well, I was gonna share it anyway, and I might as well make a little money. Whereas with an MLM, the mindset shift is, no, now it is my company and I have to get more people to sell the thing I wanna sell. And this is the only thing I'm working on. And that's not cool. Like that's not gonna get you anywhere, right? While I'm not anti-MLM, I am anti-MLM is a business. And maybe I'll make a hashtag for that or something because it's not. Um, there are some people who, who do this really, really, really well. And there are some influencers that I follow online who sell, I, you know, I know one that sells the hair stuff. What is it? Monate? Monat, Monet, whatever it's called. I, ha I follow someone who does that and she does it so well, but she has built a personal brand where people love her hair. And so it makes sense for her to be like, if you love my hair, I use this stuff. And so she's built a pretty big income from this affiliate relationship of a product she loves, but also she still has her personal brand if the company falls apart. Say the company goes to shit tomorrow, right? She still has her personal brand where she can be like, well, now I guess I'm gonna sell something else. Or she can continue to sell the other things that she's been selling the whole time other than Monate, Monat, Monet. I know another girl who started building her personal brand because she sold, I think it was Arbon, and she has done a great job, but guess what else she's done? She's created an app. She has like, this other thing over here. She has this over thing over here because she knows that she can't possibly put all her eggs in that basket because she doesn't own the basket. 
So why would you put the eggs in the basket you don't own, right? Now this brings me to the last thing I wanna talk about. And you're like, thank God, cause this is a long video, but I feel like it's important to talk about. When I talked to people who had been in MLMs in the past and had gotten out, and had, and had since started their business, had since started their journey to entrepreneurship, had since you know created some kind of business, the overarching theme they said or, or thing they said was that they feel like if they wouldn't have joined that MLM, they wouldn't have started their business. That the MLM was kind of the catalyst or the bridge that brought them to entrepreneurship that the things taught in the MLM, albeit taught wrongly and not taught well and, and taught, some of it taught just completely incorrect, the things though that they learned in that MLM, like personal development and you know whatever, were a bridge for them into entrepreneurship. Every time I hand, and I don't know what the blue stuff is. You're welcome. but. That was the bridge for them into entrepreneurship and they're not sure how they would have gotten to entrepreneurship otherwise, right? And see, this is where I can see the good in it because we need more entrepreneurs. We need more small business owners. And so, you know, if an MLM brings someone to that point, I think that's awesome. But to think that you are a business owner or an entrepreneur when you're selling an MLM, is just not true. It was really interesting to hear a couple of them say that. Like, I don't think I would have gotten to entrepreneurship if it wasn't for my MLM. Like, even though I don't, I don't agree with what they teach or I'm not doing it anymore, I think it was really good for me to get me to where I am today, to get me to read the personal development books, to get me to do X, Y, or Z, to get me to the point where I'm running a business. And that can't be discounted, right? And so if you're watching this and you're in an MLM and what you love about it is the freedom and the flexibility, I highly encourage you, I highly encourage you to look at what kind of business you can start, actual business that's yours, that's all yours, that you don't have to recruit 100 people to sell under you for, that you know you get to determine the products, that you get to determine the way the company works. Like I highly encourage you to start looking that direction and use the MLM as kind of a bridge or use the MLM as an affiliate relationship within your own personal influencer brand or personal brand in some way. Okay, so like I said, I probably made people mad saying that, but it's okay, I don't, I don't care because I know it's true. You know what I mean? Like the truth might make people mad, but sometimes the truth is what people need to hear. And I think sometimes people are, brainwashed is probably not the right word. I mean, it, that's that's a heavy word, right? Like to to think that we could be brainwashed by something is like super, it has a super negative connotation. But I do think that people in the thick of an MLM truly believe that it is like, it is the most amazing thing ever. And it could very well be for that season of your life. However, however, just know that it's not forever. It will never be forever. I don't know a single person who has done an MLM from birth to death, right? Like I don't know a single person who's done that. And I don't know a single person who has been highly successful with an MLM for years and years and years and years to the point where they weren't working at something else in the background or working a nine to five. I think the interesting part too about this is because I live in such a small town that we see people popping up and like an MLM will take off like wildfire, like 31 when I sold it, to just some probably 100,000 people were selling it. We don't even have 100,000 people who live here. We have 20,000 people in the whole county. Actually, that's not true, 27,000 now because people been moving in. But I think it's sold from the top down that oh my gosh, look at all this money you can create and have and do and like whatever. And that's really appealing to somebody who has no money, right? And so then you're like, oh my gosh, yes, please let me have that money. And then you actually are never able to get to that money because the tactics they teach you to use, which are to have parties and to bug the crap out of your friends and family and the friends from high school you've not talked to in 10 years, do not work and particularly in a small town where everybody knows everybody and when an MLM takes off, it spreads like wildfire, you're gonna run out of people to sell to. And so more than, if you're reaching for like that top, like, oh my gosh, I need to make money, I need to make money, 
start your own business. And it doesn't mean you have to start something that requires a lot of capital. I started my business for less than I bought into 31, right? Like I bought a domain and which was like what, $10 a year or something like that. And I, that was it. That was it. I started my business with that. And and I guess I registered with the state or whatever. But you can start a business without having to run into an MLM and, and MLMs can be used in a different way. And I hope everything I said made sense. If you love this video, I, I seriously think I wanna make a series. I wanna talk about the crappy marketing techniques that MLMs do. I want to, you know, possibly even interview people who have exited MLMs and started their own business. I feel like, I feel like there's a series here. So I'd love for you to comment and let me know that whether or not you want that. Let me know your personal feelings on MLMs because I think that's important. And if you want to argue with me, go ahead, honey. Go ahead. That's why the comments are there. We can chat it out. It's fine. But until next time, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure that you're coming back for videos every single freaking week because they're awesome. And and I feel like we're, we're they're going to get more awesomer. Is awesomer a word? But hit subscribe. Come hang out with me on Instagram. And if you know somebody who's kind of stuck in one of those MLMs and thinks they're a business owner and all the things, share this video with them. Bye y'all.